A quantum network enables applications that are impossible or inefficient using any form of classical networking. But can we bring a quantum network to the masses? Stephanie Vayner joins us now in studio to answer that question. Good morning to you. Thanks for your time today. Yeah. All right, let's talk about what a quantum internet looks like. What is that? So a quantum internet um, is a communication system that doesn't work like a classical internet based on zeros and ones. Okay. Uh, but it works with quantum bits or qubits. Okay. Uh, they can also be entangled with each other over okay. this network. Uh, and this allows us to do things that are either impossible or inefficient on a classical network today. So how would a quantum internet differ for the user compared to what we have today? What would difference would we see? In the ideal world, the user would not see very much of the quantumness at all. Okay. But um, of course, the things that the network can deliver to the user or the functionalities that it can enable uh, would be quite different. Uh, one of the most famous applications of uh, quantum communication is secure communication oh, okay. that is fundamentally untappable. Um, there's many other applications, for example, in forms of uh, load balancing on a network to make the network itself more efficient, okay. uh, to solve communication problems uh, more efficiently. So for example, if we want to find out what is a good time to have this interview, mm -hmm. <laughs> one can ask the question, well, how many bits do I need to send back and forth in order to solve this question? Okay. Uh, so such things can be done sometimes using exponentially fewer quantum bits than classical bits. Interesting. So what is the biggest challenge then in making this a reality? I think the biggest challenge actually um, is to make entanglement, so this basic property that kind of uh, two quantum bits have, that the quantum internet runs on. Mm -hmm. So all these applications that the internet enables come from the properties of this entanglement to make that faster. How close do you think we are to making the quantum internet a reality? Um, so I think unlike in quantum computing, that is a bit of a step function. Mm -hmm. So like uh, I have to make a quantum computer that is, has so many qubits and it is so powerful that it can beat the best classical supercomputer. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit of an all or nothing regime. Okay. Um, a quantum internet or quantum communication is a bit more gradual. Okay. Uh, so if I only want to do secure communication, right. And I'm happy to do that at like shorter distances, so meaning around 100 kilometers in fiber, okay. then you can actually buy this technology today. So you can order one, you can plug the fiber in, and then you can make uh, secure okay, communication. So it's accessible. communication. But secure communication is nice, but there's many other things you want to do. Uh, so in the Quantum Internet Alliance, we're building, a, working on building a prototype network that links two metropolitan networks over more than 500 kilometers by the end of 2029 in fiber. You're also bringing researchers together from Europe and from really all over the world to work on this. Why is that important? Why do we need that collaboration? Uh, so I'm the director of the Quantum Internet Alliance. Uh, and I try to bring people together actually because building this technology is very complicated. That requires like a lot of different things ranging from you know enabling technologies on lasers of actually building a quantum memory to you know building the software to control that to actually put it in a you know box that it can <laughs> eventually be deployed right. is super complicated. Uh, together with the Quantum Internet Lines, we've defined this moonshot mission, this technical mission of building this prototype network all together. Uh, I try to bring together things on the technical side by you know, actually defining together with everyone this moonshot mission that we want to accomplish. But also on the other side, uh, I think it's very important to try and bring together everyone here, on researchers from different disciplines, industries from different, uh, different parts on the value chain. Mm -hmm. um, and I think not just in Europe, but also in the US. You talk about making this technology accessible. Moving forward, how do we make sure that this technology is accessible for everyone? Uh, so I think it's very important that as many people as possible get access to this technology as early as possible. We'd like to actually make a call for action for everybody to actually try and build this technology, not just you know, for academia or for, say, the big mission, mm -hmm. like you know, our moonshot project of building right. this prototype network. Right. <laughs> Uh, but actually also to very focus strongly on building technologies that people can program and play with uh, and deploy themselves uh, to run, say, simpler applications like secure communication and develop that technology further themselves. Fascinating. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for all of your work and good luck this week. Yeah, thank you very much.